Hey everybody, Dewey here. Sorry for being MIA for a while. Uh, many of you have asked for a Melfi Sprite Deck profile and I am here to provide. Uh, but first, thanks to everybody who has subscribed in the past few weeks. We're now over 150 people, which is great. If you haven't subscribed yet, think about it. We'd love to get to 200. Uh, so here's the plan for today. First, we're gonna go over this Melfi Sprite deck profile. I'll explain what I feel strongly about, where I think there's room to play around, uh, and then I'll mention a couple other ideas uh, for Melfi deck building that you can let me know if you're interested in. And then in the second part of the video, I'll go through some replays and then commentate them to show you how the deck works and how I think about playing the deck. All right, so let's jump into this deck profile. For the Sprite card, it's a fairly standard lineup, three blue, three jet, uh, one red, one carrot, two smashers and three starter. Um, you could play with the red and the carrot ratios if you wanted. And this has worked pretty well for me. Sometimes I've wanted one more of each, but to keep it to 40, I have them each at one for now. I do have two smashers because in this build, you do end up with an extra body on board sometimes. And it's really nice to have uh, non-targeting banishing removal as an option to do with that extra body. I have six normal summons, which feels pretty good to me. The advantage of D.Va is that it is a tuner, so you can use it to go into an early arc light before committing to anything else, and you can also use it to go into Halk. Uh, Nimble Beaver, slightly less good than D.Va, but an advantage of it in the late game is that it can special summon beavers from the graveyard, not just the deck, like D.Va can. Called by to protect your combo, you like it to be uninterrupted, and this helps ensure that. Things that are a little bit odd, I really like Dino Wrestler Coelus a lot, did my best. Why I like this is it's an inherent summon, which lets you get an extra piece of material on a Zeus if you're trying to get to a 3-mat Zeus. It's also a tuner, so even though you can't go directly into Halk with it, you can go into something like a Arclight or Cheerful Melfi's to try to force a negate. And then I have Plague Spreader Zombie. It can be, with All Mirage, a one-card Halk starter, which does get your whole line moving. But usually what I like to do is use it to make Halk and then bring out another one, and then I have two engraved for lots of revives. And what's so great about Plague Spreader in a Melfi build is that with extra Melfis in hand, you can put them back into the deck to make Wally and Puppy and Caddy live again. So that's part of what you'll do to create your Melfi resource loop instead of using Hide and Seek, because Hide and Seek is a little bit slow and not as good in this particular build. And then I have one of each of the good Melfis. Um, sorry, Fenny. Sorry, Rabi. Some people don't run Pony, but I think especially with Penny, you want to run Pony because then you can keep making Cheerful over and over again by Pony add Penny, Penny use itself and Pony to make Cheerful, and then Cheerful bounce itself back to eventually make Joyous, end phase, Seelie can attack Joyous, then Joyous can spin itself back to make Pony, Pony make Seelie, etc, etc. Kalantosa, everyone's favorite little bush, blows things up, we love it. And then what I've chosen for the last 10 cards, you could do whatever you wanted here. I went for board breakers, so I have three droplet, three dark ruler, three lightning storm, and then one blizzard. The reason I'm playing around with blizzard is because it can beat things like smashers. It can also beat things like, you know, dark ruler, lightning storm, droplet if they don't send a spell. So it's pretty niche. People don't really expect it, but I enjoy it. And then as for the extra deck, I have two elf. I think you need at least two elf because if people do break your board, this is usually how you get back into the game by summoning something like a blue or a jet, and then starting your whole line all over again. Halk, probably the best card in the extra deck. It does so many things. You usually bring out a Plague Spreader, you can then go into Gigantic. For the Melfi, in the extra I have Forest and Joyous. Joyous, you're not usually going into directly here, you're usually making it off of Cheerful. And the reason you can run so few Melfis in the main deck is because you have this generic rank two that can search any of the Melfies that you need, usually Wally, because that gets you to everything else now. Guy Cavalry is great for getting rid of untargetable boss monsters and also for going into Zeus because it can't be destroyed by battle. Downard is there to make a bigger Zeus. Gigantic Sprite is amazing. Usually what you're doing is bringing out a tuner to go into Hell if you already have your Sprite line online. If you don't have your Sprite line online, then you'll bring out the Sprites and go from there. Formula Synchron is brought out by Halk. What's really great about Formula Synchron is that it is a level two. So if you have Halk and Elf on board, you tag out Halk, you make Formula Synchron, you can make one of these, and then you can bring back Formula with Elf and then go into another Synchro using Formula again. The important thing about Formula to remember is that 
its effect to draw a card is a when effect, so don't chain Halk to something else because then Formula will miss timing. You need to wait for that chain to resolve and then do it in a new chain. Herald is great not only for being in a gate, but also for being essentially a macrocosmos. It's really great to make when Tier Element is trying to do its thing because you can make all of their things go to the Banner Zone. Cheerful, amazing for spinning cards, also amazing for tagging out into Joyous, which can get rid of your forest to bring back a Kalantosa. And then we have Desert Locus and Psy Frame Lord Omega. The reason I like these is because usually your opponent will use a few cards trying to break your board, which will leave them with very few cards in hand. Once they get to two, you've effectively won the game because you can Desert Locus, make them discard one, and then you can uh, Omega rip the other one out of their hand and then they're left with no cards in hand. And then Brone you actually don't make that often, but you can with something like a Locusts and Cheerful or Locusts and Herald. And what's great about it is that once you use the negate, you can spin it next turn to bring back your blue or something else and do it all again. For other potential tech cards, Vulcan the Divine is a generic 6 that acts as another cheerful. What it can do is return something else you control to the hand. Usually what I do is just put Vulcan itself back in the extra deck so it's live again next turn because uh, whatever you're putting in your hand you can't use that turn. Mannequin Cat is great especially in a mirror match because you can just get so much advantage. She also is pretty strong. Um, Herald of Pure Light is interesting in a more hand trap heavy build because you can start adding those back to your hand and then putting your extra Melfies back in deck to keep them live. It's not as good here. It also can recycle your extra deck monsters which is really useful but it does cost you a card in your hand. Almirage as I said is great for Plague Spreader. Valerifon, really strong card. The problem is in this build you often don't have a beast in Grave early enough to make it useful. Wind Up Kitten is really good especially since it's a soft once per turn so if you use it link it away bring it back with sprite elf you can use it again i have a different combo video about wind up and how you can really abuse those effects in sprite hop your squadron is really good in this build i don't need it as much because i'm using halk to tag into formula and then i also have penny um, i haven't needed to go in anything bigger but if you are trying to make those big synchro bosses like i have in my other combo tutorial then you probably will want this third Synchro Enabler. In terms of other tuners that you can pull out of the deck with Halk, Reptime Reviver Emitter, which is a palindrome, reads the same forward and backward, is another option besides Plague. And the reason this is cool is that when it's in your hand or graveyard, you can Book of Moon a monster on each field to summon it. And then as long as you use it as Xyz material, it won't be banished when it leaves the field. Angler's great. There's not a lot of good ways in this deck to get it out of your hand, so it doesn't really have a home here, but keep it in mind for the future. Capshell's a little bit of a win more card. It is really cool because you can keep reviving it and keep linking it away or using it as Xyz material to draw cards, but you kind of would only do that if you already have everything else online, and sometimes it can turn into a brick. Silvervine Sentry is a really cool card. It's not totally necessary here, but can be a way to keep triggering Kalantosa, which is neat. Emergency Teleport, if you're running the Gamma package, this can just be another free body that is also a tuner. All the Paleozoic cards are really fun if you wanted to run a really back row heavy deck because when they get triggered, they come out as level twos and then the rank two Paleozoics are really strong. I have a different combo video where I go through how the sprites let you make Cambro Raster turn one, which is pretty fun. Maybe not something you would ever do, but it is really interesting. And then I don't have these cards in here. I just don't think that they're strong enough to go in. Melfi time you could put in going first if you know that you're going first, if you're expecting that your opponent's gonna do something like Dark Ruler no more. So then you at least still have some piece of interaction off of your forest, even if everything else gets negated. And of course, a quick note about Swap Frog. You are more than welcome to play three Swap Frog, one Run and Toad in, and totally awesome. It's a very good package. I personally just don't like it. I think it's overdone. I think it's annoying. I think it's OP, and it may be banned again. So if you want to splash it in here, be my guest, but I will not be doing that for now. I also have some other ideas for Melfi deck builds. Uh, one involves Melfi Adventure Kaiju. If you're interested in that, drop me a comment below, and I will play around with it some more and let you know. And then I also have some ideas about monotype beast builds for the purists among us. Okay, uh, so now let's do some replay analysis just so you can see how this deck works in practice. All right, so let's jump into some duels. So first we have one versus tier element. Uh, so we're gonna start by normal summoning D.Va. D.Va will summon D.Va from deck. Uh, from here we'll summon Jet. Jet will search a starter and then we'll go into Halk. Uh, then they're going to chain Havnus. The reason we went into Halk before activating Starter is because we're going to try to make Herald here in a second. 
Uh, so we'll link away the two of those. We now have Plague in the Grave, which is great. Uh, we'll bring out Elf, and then we'll bring a Jet back from the Grave, which we've already used, but that's okay because we're using it as Synchro Material now. We know that they're on tier, so Herald is very good against tier because now when they try to send things from the deck to the graveyard, they will be banished instead. So Starter will bring us out Blue, and then Blue can search us Carrot. Plague Spreader will bring itself back by tucking something into the deck. Then we go into Forest. Forest will search us Wally. And then Wally will summon itself to the zone that Elf points to so that it has targeting protection. And now we also have Smashers set. Um, so we have lots of interruption here. So what are they going to do? Okay, so first they're going to activate Mystic Mine. And there's something really important here. Carrot. If it tributes a level two monster, then it will negate but not destroy. So this would stay on the field, which would be a big problem. So what you need to do is you need to tribute a rank or link two monster in order to make sure that this does leave the field. So that's what we do. We tribute to a forest and now they have a monster on field. So elf can bring back a rank two monster, sorry, a, love, a link two monster. And then Halk will tag itself out for Locusts. Locust will make them discard something to the Banish Zone. And then we will use Omega to rip another card from their hand. They will try to attack over this, but we will use Smashers to get rid of it. And then they will concede. All right, here is a mirror match uh, versus a build that uses Toad. I don't use Toad personally out of personal preference. I think it's a little bit OP and I would prefer to win without it. Uh, so I do. So they did hit us with a hand trap. So we're left with only a few points of interaction, but that is okay. They start with Toad. And one thing you need to know about Sprite is that it is weak to having its normal summons and level twos removed from the field. So that is exactly what we are going to do. We are going to use Kalantosa to blow up this Swap Frog so that the uh, these will be stuck in hand. And then they probably think they're smooth sailing here, but we will just use this to go into Cheerful to return this to their hand. And then what are they going to do? Nothing. Right, next up we have a duel versus Despia. Uh, so here again, we are going first. This time we start with Beaver. Beaver brings out Beaver. Then we bring out Blue. Blue searches Jet. Uh, we are going to bring out Carrot. And then as our last play, just in case they do have Nib, we're going to use Starter to bring out Red. And then from here, the rest of our line should be pretty protected. Gigantic brings out Plague. And then Gigantic and Plague go into Halk, which brings out another Plague. Then we link those off to make Elf. Elf brings something back. Then Jet gets us Smashers. Then we're able to go into Forest. Forest can search us Wally. Uh, we don't really have enough zones for Wally to resolve right now, but chances are we'll be able to negate something. So here's our chance to negate. They do branded opening. And then we messed this up. So remember how I said earlier you can't chain this, otherwise you won't get your draw? Well, that's what I just did here, so don't be like me. So we're going to use this. Now we have the zones we need. Wally will bring out Caddy and Puppy. Now Elf will bring us back Formula. Now we can Synchro again to get rid of that with Cheerful. And then our opponent surrenders. And we still have lots more things we could do if they had more gas. So it's a pretty intense board, but we are going to do what we can to get around it. So first we normal Silvervine Sunry. Then we go into Melfi the Forest. They negate it, but we don't really care because they've left things in defense position so we can just attack into them. For a measly 200, go into Downer and then go into Zeus. And then they're gonna try to negate, but they don't have another negate. Uh, so we're able to clear the entire board. And then from there, since we have starter, we are now able to do pretty much our entire combo. We see right, right's a little bit of a problem and they almost blow up our Wally, but we are able to get it with called by. They are gonna go into Griffin Rider, but because we have two Melfis on field, thanks to Wally, we get to chain block. Uh, and so people usually think the puppy is the problem, but 
in this situation, we have Sealy, so we're gonna be able to uh, bounce things back to hand. So now they're left with almost nothing, and because Gigantic still has material, we have full combo, so they surrender. Next we have a Punk Duel. Uh, so we are going first. We will Normal Summon our red, uh, which would let us protect this if we needed to. We get a bunch of bodies on board. Then we go into Gigantic, which brings out Plague. From there we go into Hulk. Bring out Hoppier. Go into Forest. One thing I will say about choosing what to detach from Forest, you can protect Plague from something like a DD Crow if you keep it tucked under one of your Xyz material, or one of your Xyz monsters. start by bringing this out. We don't really like that, so we may try to get rid of it or just negate it. Yeah, we use forest on that so that it cannot activate its effect. They've normal summoned again. They have chosen death. Uh, we bring out Kalantosa and add Penny to the hand. So now we're going to use Hoppier to get rid of our Kalantosa. To go into Cheerful. We're going to take all their VWs off board because the way that VW starts making moves is by having VWs face up on the field. And then we negate their last card with Carrot. And okay, this is a match versus Eldritch with a lot of floodgates. Uh, a bad thing happened to us and we did not open a level two to go with our jet. So we're gonna take it slow. Thankfully we get starter. We will activate. They chain D barrier, but that's okay because we have a lot of things in our extra deck. So we're gonna bring out Carrot to uh, trade with our back row. And then from here, these are kind of beefy, so we're going to attack. Um, remember how I said that this doesn't destroy unless you tribute a rank or link two monster? Well, the thing about the trap monsters is that if you negate their effects but don't destroy them, they're just stuck in the back row, which is really good against Eldritch because now this doesn't get to banish itself from the graveyard to bring out other things. So we have three in the back row, and we are able to bring out some very useful things. When they activated the Theater of the Branded, we knew we didn't need to negate it because they only have one card in hand, so they can't actually fuse anything right now. So we're gonna save Carrot for something else. Here we're going to go into Sprite, and then we're trying, they're trying to use D-Barrier. They wanna hit us with Skill Drain, but we have the Smashers for it. From here, it is smooth sailing. And that is lethal. All right, here's a fun one. This is first uh, Despia Preta Plant. So we went first, we get out Beaver, and we get some sprites out of our hand. And we try to protect ourselves from Nib because we didn't do Gigantic early. Then we get to Hauk. Hauk gets us to Plague. From here we get to Forest, and then we get out our Wallaby, and also Caddy. So Caddy's not live right now because, or sorry, Wally's not live right now because we have too many cards on field, but we solved that by using Carrot. We're going to trigger a whole bunch of things here, get Hulk back on field, and use both Wally and Caddy. In a new chain, we will use formula to draw. And then we know they're gonna use branded fusion. So what we're doing is we're waiting to activate formula Seacron until they activate branded fusion so that their cards go to the banish zone. All right, and then we blow up one of their cards with Kalantosa. We bring out Penny to make them discard a couple things. Well, I'm sorry, discard one and then we'll rip one. 
and then they'll use branded fusion. And as I said, we will make arc light. So both of the singles will be banished and they will rage quit. Honestly, maybe I would too. Okay, and here's a game versus striker where we get hand trapped three times and still win. Uh, part of the problem in striker is that if you open three hand traps, you may not have opened engine and they did not. So they used one hand trap, that's two hand traps. It's okay because plague lets us keep extending and then we can keep plague from being banished by using it as exceeds material. They will use their ash on our last hope, but that's okay. They get mine, but that's okay because we already got to smashers. Uh, we're gonna wait to use it though because we don't want to banish this or this, but banishing this is okay. We're gonna use D barrier, which means we can't use this or go into Zeus, but we will do a little damage. They'll get to not engine, but something that trades with this, which is unfortunate for us, but that's okay because we have another way to keep moving. We're gonna go to Diva, Diva into Elf. We're gonna use this shark cannon to get rid of what we were trying to summon, which is annoying, but that's okay, they still have nothing. drop it will be very important in a minute. So they get to this, which will let them get to Ray. Then Ray's gonna try to attack this, but we're gonna droplet sending a monster so Ray can't respond, meaning she's gonna be destroyed. Uh, and then they get to add this back, but there's nothing they can really do with it. So now our full line is online and they surrender. All right, everybody, thanks for coming along for this ride. That was our Melfi Sprite deck profile and some commentated replays. Um, if you'd like to see more stuff like this in the future, drop me a comment, like, subscribe, you know the deal. And if there's any other videos you wanna see on this front, do let me know. I am receptive to that. All right, have a great day, bye-bye.